You know what we're gonna do today? We're gonna do some sword fishing. Yeehaw, you know that's my favorite. I got my hot coffee. Kind of a chilly day. I'm wearing long shorts, sweater, ready to go offshore. I got all my sword fishing gear ready, except there's one thing I'm missing, and that's some rigging floss. You use rigging floss to put it on your line that you can clip your deep drop way to. So I'm gonna hop in my car, go to the tackle shop real quick, and then our buddy Joe from Extreme Outdoors is gonna pick us up in his boat right from my dock. Oh, there's a rat! It's right behind the rock, hold on. Hey buddy. He's got a chunk missing out of his ear, I think. Well, there you have it, a little swamp rat. He does. Oh, there he goes. Ho oh. ho! All right, this is not a rat catch and cook. This is a sword fishing catch and cook. I got a, this, I call this my bird and iguana sanctuary. I got two bird feeders, like a goblet of lettuce and greeneries, um, a bird bath, and then I have these stones that I usually put nuts on and stuff for the animals. I totally forgot what I was talking about, but I'm going to the car now. Let's get some rigging floss. Then we're going to meet up with Joe, and then it's time to go fishing. Yeehaw! You know, I love these Yeti mugs, but they do not fit into any cup holder whatsoever. Put them on the floor. Bum, bum, down. Take me to the yellow bait house. Take me to the yellow bait house. It's literally yellow. Just pull right up on in here. Emergency. They did not have rigging floss. Emergency, nine, call 911. They did not have rigging floss. We're gonna try uh, Captain Pete's bait and tackle now, see if they have some rigging floss. I love when my mornings start like this. Come on, move it. Move it! There's Captain Pete's. And I'm stuck in traffic. Come on. I gotta get into that turning lane over there. I should just go through the grass. I think there's a school bus up there, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Hey, if you ever need a cleaning service, it looks like uh, Mar Maribel's Keys Cleaning Service. Let's get some freaking bait. I love their artwork. Look at that. Fingers crossed, boys. Fingers crossed. Damn it. Boys, we got a problem. They had no rigging floss. Oh, I don't know what to do. West Marine doesn't open for another hour and we want to leave by then, so. <coughs> I'll come up with something. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Captain Bats, be my savior. Damn it! We got a problem on our hands, boys. Not even Captain Bad had rigging floss. All right, I'm at my last option. I'm gonna tear apart my man cave looking for my roll of floss that I believe I have somewhere, somewhere down here. Quick update, I haven't found the floss yet, but I did find some dental floss, and then I found some of this world-class yachting rope, which is kind of flossy. Not really what I'm looking for, but we might have to get a rig something today. Well, after having Mein Kampf this morning, this is the solution I came up with. I have this slightly flossed rope for yachting, and I have this super glue for tying flies. So I'll probably just wrap this on there real good, glue it, and hope that holds the weight. Right now, Caitlin's upstairs. She's almost done, and we're just waiting on Extreme Outdoors to show up. We got all of our gear, deep drop weights, we got the Banex 1000 electric reel, which is going to be our float line reel, our float. And look what we got. Rigging floss. Wait, do they know what happened for you? They know I've been searching for it. I basically tore apart the whole house and Caitlin found it the moment she came downstairs. <laughs> but there it is, rigging floss. See, you need me. <laughs> All right, Joe should be here any second. How are y'all doing this fine morning? What up? <laughs> Guess what? I found the rigging floss. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, right? I found two rolls of it. I knew I wasn't crazy. <laughs> oh, they made. I'm gonna bring regular dental floss. <laughs> I literally have dental floss in my 
bag right now. Are we gonna catch the swordfish today? We're gonna catch the swordfish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Next yeah. Damn. Well, I got the floss in action, and I'm basically just half hitching it on here, and eventually gonna create a big loop, and that's what the weight's gonna clip onto. All right, we're on the boat with Joe, and uh, doing, I'm guessing, your favorite part of fishing? Yeah, that's what I love most. <laughs> Me too, I know exactly the feeling. Especially at the marina. <laughs> yeah, at the boat marina, <laughs> the cheapest place to get fuel. Well, for sure. It's gonna be worth it. What are we gonna catch today? We're going for swordfish. Big old swordfish. All right, ready. fingers crossed. Time to run, I don't know, 30, 35 miles offshore and get to fishing. It out to the to the promised lands. We're in a uh, 1,700 feet of water, and we're gonna get our rigging ready, and then it's time to drop them on down. Yep. We got a beautiful eel. That right there is our eel sword bait. You. <laughs> Bam. Squid going out. Here she goes. So I just put the rubber band on like that. Just like that. And then we'll give it maybe 15 feet between. Yeah, and you could just reel them right in and it should pop off. You gotta reel hard sometimes, but. All right, and last light. We're doing it. That eel, man, looks good. All right, now to the floss loop. Where's that old yellow floss loop at? Oh, there she is. Okay, this is where things get a little exciting. So now we put it in free spool. Okay. Geronimo. Here she comes. <laughs> down, down, down she goes. We got 1734 feet of line out. Now we're gonna put it in neutral, drift back towards our weight. Hopefully that weight hits the bottom. It was actually kind of funny for a second there. I haven't seen it do that before. <laughs> this is when you start to go crazy. Come on. I don't know what's going on here. 
After several hours of believing our rod would bend over, the sun starts to set, so we ride back in. Which are Caitlin's favorite of swordfish. <laughs> but I'm more confident now than ever that I will catch a swordfish soon. Junior drops us off, and we call Numtai for dinner. Two days later. Well, it's been a couple days, and I've been contemplating. I've been contemplating a lot here. Y'all remember when I caught my first swordfish? There it is! There it was! It just jumped, kind of. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Money shot. What was that? Two years ago now? And I've probably gone sword fishing 20 plus times. Spent thousands of dollars in fuel, and I have yet to catch another one. But I think 2021, no, I don't think. 2021 will be the year that I catch another swordfish. And as soon as I get my boat back, I'm not gonna shave <laughs> until I catch the swordfish. But until then, I decided, instead of trying to catch the hardest fish to catch, why don't I try and catch the easiest fish to catch? And what's the easiest fish to catch in the Florida Keys? The big old barracuda. By the way, I've been doing a lot of gardening and it's looking real good. That's my bird iguana sanctuary. Oh, check it out, I got a dove right there. Those are good eating, but uh, they're out of season right now and I'm gonna be nice to the doves, but there are a Florida invasive, oh, there's another dove right there. There's a Florida invasive spe dove species that has a black ring around their neck. So maybe we'll hunt some of those someday, but check it out. Oh, look at them go. <laughs> uh, I feed them, they're my friends. I'm not gonna hunt them. But I got my paddle board set up. We're gonna do a little bit of paddle boarding. Might as well end this video good, right? Catch a barracuda, do a little catch and cook. That is if I can catch a barracuda. I'm gonna be using artificials only, so uh, let me show you my gear and we'll paddle out and uh, get to it. I got my GoPro chest mount. This I'll be wearing in just a second. I got my bag of, let's see, I got a knife. That's my, my bait knife. I got pliers. I have these Mirodine lures. Barracuda love these things. So I'll show you my rod setup. This right here is hands down my favorite rod setup for inshore and offshore fishing. I'll show you why. So this is a Pen Conflict 2 reel loaded down with 10 pound Power Pro braid. And that goes to about three feet of fluorocarbon leader, 12 pound fluorocarbon going with a little loop knot straight to a Mirodine lure. Now, Barracuda have teeth, so there's a high chance that they can um, cut this lure off. Hopefully that won't be the case. The smaller Barracuda usually tend not to cut it off. I probably should put some wire on here, but I ain't got time for that. Now the rod. This is the puppy of all puppies. This is a Toadfish Outfitters, the seven foot six inch medium heavy fast rod. And the thing I like about it is if you look right here, it handles 10 to 50 pound braid. So this rod is perfect for small fish, inshore fishing, all the way out to offshore if you wanna put a heavier reel on it with 20 or 30 pound braid. And for mahi fishing and stuff, this rod is an awesome pitch rod. Can handle everything. If you're fishing inshore, smaller fish, throw like a pen conflict two on there. If you're going offshore for bigger fish, you can actually still use a pen conflict or a similar reel, pen 3500 or something, and maybe put some 20 pound braid on it. That'll handle just about any fish. All right, let's paddle out. Boy, I got my GoPro strapped on. And another thing I forgot to mention is definitely bring a rag out there because them little barracuda, they're slimy and they don't smell that great. That's why a lot of people don't keep barracudas because they stanky. It's a little windier today, Let's paddle on out and try not to fall in.
tell you what, it's a lot windier than the uh, last time I went out. I'm gonna go up to these mangroves here and find a nice little tucked in spot. This will do. Oh, I see a barracuda right there. Oh my gosh. Crap. Barracuda's right there in that corner. If I've learned anything, it's that barracuda are always lurking, lurking in these mangroves. They can't help themselves. That's what they were born to do. fish right down there. There's got to be a barracuda out here. Oh, there was just a barracuda right there. He just jumped three feet in the air chasing my lure, but he missed it. Come on, fishy, fishy, fishy. I'm not crazy. I know there's barracuda around here. Usually I catch the barracuda, just reeling it in like this. I don't even twitch it or anything. I just give it a nice steady reel. Looks great swimming through the water. Found a nice spot out of the wind back here. Don't see any barracuda though. When it's this clear, you can pretty much side cast them. Hmm. Don't see any here. There's a little barracuda right there. Not big enough to eat though. There's two barracudas. They're all small. I just had a fish on. Got off. Dang it. Coming for you, fishy. Oh, fish on. Fish on. Yes. Barracuda. Yeah. He's kind of small, I'm not going to keep him. Pretty cool. I'm going to have to take my players and get him off of here. Oh, he got off himself. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Nice, and off he goes. See a barracuda right there. Oh, why didn't it go for it? Fish on, fish on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish on. Oh, another too small to eat. Away he goes. Fish on, yeah, baby. Another one. Another. Feels a little bit bigger. Okay. Still a little too small, but 
getting bigger. Oh yeah, we got a good one here. Fish on. Oh, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Okay. Grab him with my rag. Cut his throat real quick. I think he's dead. I sure hope he's dead. <laughs> All right, sweet. Time to paddle home. Oh, he's moving. He's alive. Oh, I don't want him to bite my toe. Whew. Home sweet home. Got my rod, I didn't even bother taking the hook out. Oh, look at this guy. His nerves are twitching. We got a little mouse walking around on the fire pit. I just set up our little fillet table here. Time to flare barracuda and check this out. My neighbor gave me an avocado seed and I planted it. Now I'm gonna have a big avocado plant. Right, Mouse? Hey, buddy. All right, here he is. There's already a couple little flies landing on him, and I heard that's a good sign when flies are landing on barracuda. It means there's no cigatera. Since this is a small fish, I'm just going to cut over the ribs. There we go. One nice fillet of barracuda. It's actually pretty thick, pretty nice fillet. Pretty happy about that. And I'll just fillet the other side and then we'll skin them. Alright, we got both fillets off. We're going to get rid of the Barracuda. I'm gonna spray the spray this meat off a bit. Make sure there's no scales on it. Get your bag ready. There we go. 
Boom. I'll wash that off and we'll bag it up. Okay, once you got all the scales off, put a paper towel on it because I don't want it going in the bag too wet. Normally I use a bigger bag, but we ran out. <laughs> A little paddleboarding trip, and I got more meat than 15 sword fishing trips. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Guess what I got? Yeah, I don't know, you tell it's me. It's dripping everywhere. Ooh. We got a bag full of barracuda. Oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Paper towels off of it. Boom. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah. That's a nice one. Doesn't smell bad? No. Okay. 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 And I'm just going to cut this barracuda kind of up into like fr friable, manageable sized pieces. How's that sound? So good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We'll just like do like cubed up pieces, I guess. All right, almost done here. Bam, shazam, clap. There we go. There's our pile of barracuda meat. Thank you. Say hi, Pete. Say hi, Pete. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. All right. I have an, an exciting announcement. This is the Sargent O seasoning, the special Heiko blend with some Carolina Reaper in it. And I'm going to give it just a little, a little spicero. Kind of marinate this fish in it just a little bit. It's got a really nice kick. Bam! Seasoned up our fish a little bit. And on February 28th, big day, that's next month, February 28th, 2021, we are launching a new brand, Red, White, and Blue Outdoors. And we're going to have the Sergeant O seasoning on there with a special. We got an offshore blend, we got a blackening blend, a spicy blend. We're also coming out with some blends for duck, deer, wild hog. It's going to be, what's like a good, it's going to be hog wild. It's going to be red, white, and blue outdoors. <laughs> and actually for launch day, we are giving out an electric, what do you call it? An electric bike for fishing. We're gonna give one out and the only way, all you gotta do to enter to win is to go to rwboutdoors.com, put in your email address, and then on launch day, we're gonna do a big live stream and somebody on the email list is gonna win an electric bike and we're gonna give out a whole bunch of other prizes. And then on launch day, we're gonna have our seasonings, we're gonna have a bunch of our fishing rigs, a whole new line of clothing, um, fishing jerseys, we got camo coming out for hunting, we got like stick marsh camo, woods camo. <laughs> you out of breath. Yeah, I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, if you go to rwboutdoors.com and you uh, add your email there, you'll get notified every time I, I post a new fishing video, new recipes, hunting tips and tricks, fishing tips and tricks. You know, maybe we'll even send out an email, an email update letting everyone know how our kittens are doing. All sorts of good stuff. Yeah, prepare for that. And we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of videos that are more like tutorial videos, how to use certain fishing rigs, how to catch certain fish. Like quick, quick like two, three minute videos on that channel. You're gonna to wanna to be part of it. It's gonna be a good time. And we're bringing a bunch of people together for it. Here we are, we're gonna cook some barracuda. <laughs> this is what we have to do when you don't catch a swordfish. Our breading mix is a little bit of cornstarch A little bit of flour. And Publix original breadcrumbs. Salt. Shake that up. Woo -hoo -hoo. 
By the way, I'm heating up some peanut oil in there, which is, looks like it's getting nice and hot right now. And we'll just plop in some, and I could probably do, I think I could do all of them. Close the lid on that. Oh yeah. They know they're not supposed to be up here. They're just watching, but oh my gosh, look at the kisses. They love each other. Time to drop in the old barracuda. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and the sizzle. Oh yeah. Turn down the heat just a little bit. Ooh. Smells good. Okay, it's been, uh, I actually wasn't looking at the time. Six, seven, eight minutes, but what I do know is, check it out, our barracuda is a nice golden brown color. We'll take them out, put them on a paper towel, and we're just gonna let them cool down for a minute or two, and then it's feasting time. <laughs> it's barracuda time! So I got some mango habanero beef Brady sauce. I thought that might be good dipping. Like a nice ma fresh mango, spicy mango sauce. But before I use the spicy mango sauce, let's just get, let's just eat it how it is. Yeah. Barracuda, here we go. I'm a little nervous. Don't be. It smells good. It's hot. Yeah. Not gonna lie, it tastes like. What can I compare it to? It tastes like fried white fish. Is it like juicy? Is it firm or is it? Like... Well, it was so hot that I didn't really get a good flavor profile out of it. Let's see I... the inside. Can you see that? Nice. So nice, nice and white. Mhm. Mm kind of flaky too, like snapper almost. Here, I'll have it. I think it's cooled down a little bit. It looks like freshwater catfish. Freshwater catfish? Yeah, it, kind of, it does kind of look like that. It's like like a tint of like gray color, mm -hmm. like catfish a little bit. Let's try some with dipping sauce. Oh yeah. Mm, Alright. If you're having a slow day of fishing and you catch a barracuda, go on, throw them in the boat. Because I guarantee you, if you fried up some barracuda for someone and then fried up some, I don't know, maybe like some grunts or snapper or something, probably won't tell a difference. No. Mm -mm. It's like any fried fish for the most part, I'd say. There you have it, barracuda. Some people say they don't want to eat barracuda because they're afraid of getting cigatera poisoning, but hogfish have cigatera. I hope I'm saying that right, cigatera. And people still eat those and they don't have a problem. Yeah. It's it's just the bigger fish. Probably like where they're from, right? This like always keeps Yeah, like, like we met someone that got cigatera poisoning from a big hog fish from the Bahamas. From the Bahamas, right. Because mm -hmm. they eat like reef stuff and then they get the bacteria in them. Same with barracuda. If you catch a barracuda that's this big living in the Bahamas, you might get sick from it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Marine biologist. Yeah. Thing. What am I? Marine biology class? Barracuda, don't be afraid to keep one on the boat. They do s kind of smell a little funny. I always think barracuda smells like, like if you just mow a lawn and it's like grassy smelling with like, with fish involved. It's like a weird grass fish smell. It's an interesting combo. Yeah, like I like the smell of fresh cut grass, but not when it's mixed with fish. It's like, what is that? 
But it didn't smell in the house after you filleted it and everything. Yeah, once you fillet it and you take the skin off of it, the actual meat part doesn't stink. Yeah. It's just the skin and the slimy juices it oozes out. Yeah. Uh, it's like, as soon as you kill it, it's like, I'm gonna squeeze out my juices. Ru ruin this guy's $400 Yeti cooler. Ugh. That's what Barracuda oh do. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to go to rwboutdoors.com and enter your email address because we got a lot of really awesome stuff coming and that's going to be my main channel of reaching out to my subscribers, keeping you guys updated with what's new and a bunch of tutorial videos I'm going to be doing and until next time, cheers. <laughs>